Tonight we are having shepherd's pie with Parmesan potatoes and I'm getting the recipe out of this cookbook. This is a Weight Watchers cookbook. I don't follow Weight Watchers, but I love their recipes um, because they're healthy and they're simple and they always taste good and they're most of the time very quick to make. Um, so in case you're wondering, that's why. Um, this recipe, I'll show you guys if you wanna pause the video. I don't know if you guys can see that and see what all's in it. Um, it's really simple. We've made it a lot and everybody likes it. Um, except for Ezra. Sometimes he's picky about food, but for the most part he likes it. So I am going to uh, use red potatoes for the mashed potato topping and then we put in some Parmesan cheese in there. And I'm going to dice up this onion and chop up or mince the garlic. And I think I have everything else. I'm gonna brown the ground beef. Um, yeah, and that's it. So I will chat with you guys while we cook and share my, or Weight Watchers, Shepherd's Pie recipe with you. Okay, um, let me grab this dish. This is a stoneware casserole dish that my mom, it's a little stained just because of wear, wear and tear. My mom got me this for Christmas one year and I love this thing. I actually don't know where she got it. Um, made in the U.S. Rada Cutlery Stoneware. Hmm. Maybe that's the brand. Anyway, I love this thing. It cooks food really well. It cleans really well. I just love that. So that's where I'm going to put everything in. So I'm going to set this aside and get my ground beef browning while I peel and chop and mince all this good stuff. Okay, so I bought um, beef at the store. Well, I actually ordered it the other day, and it came in a big, like, two-and-a-half-pound container. So I just split it in half, and I put it in a freezer baggie, stuck it in the freezer, one in the fridge, one in the freezer, and I'm just going to heat it. This is like a pound and a quarter, I guess, of beef. pound and a quarter of beef. This calls for one and three-fourths. Nope, that's something else. This only calls for a pound of ground beef, but I'm gonna use just a little bit over that. Um, we don't really like a ton of meat in our food. I usually cut back on meat, but like I said, that was two and a half pounds of beef and I just separated it. So that's gonna be two and one fourth pound, but that's okay. cutting onions because it burns your eyes. I wear contacts, so they kind of block a lot of oxygen from getting to your eye. That's why you're not supposed to wear them all the time. You're supposed to take them out, put your glasses on so your eyes can breathe. But actually, I should say, the contacts that I wear are like, um, they're supposed to let more oxygen into your eye. However, I can cut onions without them bothering my eyes for the most part. Every once in a while, we'll get a really strong onion and it like stings my eyes, but for the most part, it's not a big deal. Um, and I always forget that onions don't bother me, and so then I'll go and put my glasses on, and I'll come in here and cook dinner, and I'm like bawling and crying because the onions are so strong in my eyes, and I realize, oh my gosh, I took my contacts out, and I just forget, and I totally forget that they hurt people's eyes. <laughs> so I'm just so used to wearing my contacts. Anyway. Anyway, do you, um, onions, cutting onions, does it bother you? And like, if it does, what do you do to protect your eyes? I've seen some people wear goggles, like literally wear like ski goggles to keep the oils and the vapors away from their eyes, which I totally get that. Okay, I'm gonna chop, um, I'm gonna add this chopped onion into the beef as the beef's cooking, and then I'm gonna mince my garlic and I'm gonna add that in as well just so all of this stuff cooks together. So that was about one large onion, and this calls for four cloves of garlic, so get that ready. And I like a lot of garlic, especially during the winter, especially during cold and flu season. 
So I will probably put in, uh, there's five, there's six pieces of garlic. There's seven, that's a little one. So this will be good. And these aren't large cloves either. There's some small ones. So, you know, four or five-ish is about what I'm putting in. Whenever I go to cut garlic up to mince it, I always press the side of my knife blade onto the clove of garlic to crush it because that makes the skin peel off really easily. There are probably other ways to make garlic skin come off of garlic cloves easier, but that's just what I was taught and that's how I've always done it. If you do it differently, if you have like an easier way of peeling garlic, I would love to know because I use a lot of garlic in our recipes. I feel like I'm always adding garlic to soups or pasta dishes, casseroles, anything like that. Well, this one, I didn't crush it very well because it's not coming off. And I'm just roughly chopping or mincing this garlic. I'm not trying to be really um, perfectionistic with it. It's like if there are bigger chunks, that's fine. When you cook it and the garlic and the onion both, when they get hot, they lose some of their spicy heat. Um, so even if you were to like bite into a big chunk of garlic, once it's cooked, it's not going to have that real strong garlic flavor or any of that burn. So if I have big chunks in here, that's not a big deal. I am definitely not going to spend a lot of time cutting this up really finely. Okay, I'm gonna add this in with my beef and my onions. I don't think you guys can see this pot here. I probably should have gotten like a larger saucepan. like my stuff is almost to the top should have got something a little bit bigger but it's okay we'll make do so I'm just trying to like break up the beef mix in the onion mix in the garlic with the beef and just let it all cook down oh and this is another question I want to ask you guys um I have seen people cook their garlic like this, the way I'm doing it, just by cooking it in the pan and then you pour off the grease when you're done. But I've also seen people like boil their beef in water. But I, that's, that's I in America, I don't know that we do that. If you're an American and you're watching this and you boil your beef in water, I would love to know. I mean, my mom never did that and I don't think my mother-in-law does it. I don't think any of my sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws, I don't think anybody cooks their beef this way, that way, but I have seen people on YouTube do that so I didn't know if that was like other countries do that um, or maybe just in different parts of America people do that that could be like just a family thing like how you're taught I don't know but if you cook your beef differently than just browning it on the stove in a pan and you uh, boil it I would love to know and I would love to know why and maybe I should try that and see how it maybe it's easier or it tastes different I don't know anyway for now this is how I'm doing it. This is how I've always done it. Works well. <laughs> I was just kind of curious about that when I saw it and I thought, that's it's so strange, but maybe it's not strange. Maybe this is strange. Don't know. Okay. So while that is browning, move all my stuff out of the way. I need to throw away. Um, let's see. I need to cut these and I need to get those cooking on the stove. This was a five pound bag, but I'm not sure how many, how much this is now. This may be like two pounds, a pound and a half, two pounds of potatoes.
this is like some really weird smells going on. That's savory and that's spicy and sweet. So it smells odd in my kitchen right now. Almost done right here. My onions are translucent, but the meat's still a touch pink, so let's just keep going. mixed vegetables. It's got corn, um, carrots, and it looks like peas and green beans in it. And I'm just going to heat those on the stove and kind of soften them a little. And then I'll put them on top of the beef. And I'm just going to use the same little saucepan that I used to cook the beef in, just so I don't dirty up something else. Okay, so now I have peeled my potatoes and cut like the bad spots out. I'm gonna put them in this dish and I'm gonna rinse them really well and drain any of the dirt or like skin that got stuck to the potatoes off. And then I'm gonna cover them in water and I'm going to bring them to a boil and cook them until like, they're soft and I can mash them. <laughs> okay, and these pans, these pots and pans that I have, um, they're like a waterless, sort of like a waterless cookware. You only put a tiny bit of water in the bottom, and then you open this little, there's like a little, I don't know if you guys can see that, like a little valve there. And you open it, and it'll build up pressure and steam, and it'll start whistling. And when it whistles, you turn the temperature down to low, and you close the valve so that it holds all the steam in. And that helps to cook without a ton of water, because you typically will lose a lot of veg or vegetables. You lose a lot of vitamins in your water, um, so this allows you to cook with less water and save some of the vitamins in your vegetable. All right, so the potatoes are cooking, softening up these veggies. Okay, so now that I've added the beef into my casserole dish, I'm going to add in some thyme and some tomato paste. I'm gonna put some salt in and just a splash of red wine. That was probably about a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of thyme and I don't measure stuff. Sometimes I usually just kind of like gauge it, like look at, eye it, eyeball it. Pour it out in my hand. Yeah, that looks like a teaspoon. Yeah, this is like a tablespoon, a pinch of this, a pinch of that, all that good stuff. And I actually need to get another set, another can opener because this one is giving me issues. It's so troublesome. Just the worst. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just gonna stir this really well to mix all of this together. I'm gonna try to incorporate the spices and um, the tomato paste and the wine into the meat really well. Give it a lot of good flavor. All right, and now that these veggies are soft, I'll turn the stove off and I'm gonna pour those in here as well. And I'm gonna mix all of this together really well. Now that I have my beef and my veggies mixed together, I'm just gonna let those sit here and let those flavors kind of absorb and meld together while my potatoes are cooking. When the potatoes are done, I'm gonna add my milk, salt, and butter um, after pouring the water off and I'll blend all of that together and then I'll just cover this with potatoes and sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top and then I'll put it in the oven to bake. So right now while this is sitting here and I'm still waiting on these mashed potatoes, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350 degrees, yep, 350 degrees. And by the time the potatoes are ready, it should be preheated and this will just be sitting here and I'll be drinking my half glass of wine. I'll also be cleaning up and putting everything away at the same time. Okay, so the potatoes are ready. So I'm gonna use about a half of a stick of butter. I think, maybe a little less than that. Should toss that in. Gonna do about a table or a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just gonna pour in water. I don't really measure that great for mashed potatoes. I just kind of eyeball it. Like most things I cook. And then I'm going to use a potato masher. Um, I killed my immersion blender, which is what I used to use when I was making mashed potatoes um, about a year ago, and I just never replaced it. Um, I had this potato masher, and I've always used that ever since I killed the immersion blender, and this works pretty well. I mean, it doesn't make the smoothest mashed potatoes, but if the potatoes are cooked really well, it does match them, um, and I think they're fine, and nobody has complained, so I'm actually happy to just save, you know, 40 or $50 and just use this handy-dandy little potato masher. All right, so once I get these mashed pretty well, I'll taste them and see if they need like more salt or more butter. Um, it'll probably be fine though. potatoes like this it's not worth it to me okay so now that the potatoes are done I'm gonna spread them across the meat and veggies and then I'm gonna top that with um, Parmesan cheese my shepherd's pie to have a really parmesan -y flavor so I am actually putting a good bit of parmesan on the top of this and this will give it a nice brown kind of finish also like when it okay time to go in the oven <laughs> 